Hey, welcome to the Virtually Speaking podcast series, exploring VMware Cloud Foundation inside the private cloud. My name is Pete Fletcher, and I'm excited to be doing this one with my good friend, Mr. John Nicholson. John, how you doing, buddy? Good. I'm, I've been spending some time in the lab today, and I'm, I'm just trying to get a full understanding of what all is going on. Um, I've just got some gaps in my head. Is it a manual lab that you have? What is your lab? Yeah, look like? it's small batch, handcrafted infrastructure, you know, just artisanal, artisanal, I artisanal knew it. organic, um, gluten free. Gluten free. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah. Well. Well. That's. I've got nothing for you then, because what we're talking about today is actually a full cloud management experience. We're talking about automation uh, using Aria, and uh, yeah, which is uh, for those of you that don't know, VMware Cloud Foundation. Uh, it now comes with the full Aria uh, suite inside of VMware Cloud Foundation. It's all wrapped in there. So really cool stuff. And here to give us all the information on that is Senior Director of Product Management, Chandra Prathuri. Chandra, how are you doing? Good. How are you? Thanks, and uh, you know, thanks for inviting me to this podcast. Awesome. Yeah. So, so as I was saying, like we all know that you know automation is is clearly important, except for John with his uh, artisanal uh, home lab. But uh, for for organizations that are looking for true, serious private cloud environments, um, you know, clearly there's an emphasis on automation. But maybe we can set the level straight up. Like, why is automation important uh, to cloud administrators? Sure. No. Thanks for asking the question. So let's start with a provocative question back to you. Can IT uh, leaders or IT teams turn on and turn off their data centers? And can they actually provide the agility to their internal teams, or a self-service type of service to their internal teams to create modern applications? And what we, you know, these IT data centers are made up of are server storage and network, put together more like a jigsaw puzzle, and several teams working together in a tango to make the whole thing work. Whenever there is any change in the system, then it upsets the system in a way that you have to put all these things together again, and, and in the process, it takes time and effort for you to uh, provide the type of service your internal um, uh, business users are looking for. This sounds more like by organic, hand-pressed, you know, slowly, slowly de delivered uh, infrastructure, you know, that you're describing here. But, you know, how do we how do we go from this, you know, I guess reactionary, you know, we built it as we did, as applications or individual features or components were put in. How do we go from this model where things have been de declared, I guess, um, imperatively to a, a declarative type infrastructure for my applications and my data center? Um, yeah, so... Uh, you, because these systems are sort of disparate and, and it is harder for IT teams to manage, and um, the businesses uh, try out cloud providers to deploy applications because they provide the agility, internal IT teams are not able to provide the agility. And this results in a higher cost for our uh, IT teams, and uh, because they're not only managing their existing data centers, tools, and processes, they're, bu they're building new tools and processes to work with the applications and the cloud providers. And what VMware Cloud Foundation by Broadcom can do is it helped many of our customers to actually build out data centers um, that can actually be turned on or off. And it enables our, our customers to create, the, uh, to provide that infrastructure service to their internal users, not only uh, with agility, but also the scalability and availability that their internal teams look for. Yeah, so the first time I heard you say that, Chandra, uh, my first question was, why would anybody want to even turn off a data center? I tripped over the power cable. <laughs> <laughs> like, isn't the idea for these to be always on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so the idea is for the applications to be always on. And the infrastructure needs to provide that level of uh, uh, scalability and availability that applications are looking for. And there are lots of reasons why customers want to have that capability to uh, move from data center to data center and and have that la and provide that availability to, the, to their internal users, and which means that they have to be able to automate. And if you go to a cloud provider, they are able to uh, provide that type of services to their customers because they're able to automate their infrastructure, and they're able to create a set of services that that customers can consume. What VMware Cloud Foundation can bring to our customers is exactly that ability to create that data center, to build it, to manage, operate it, and create that agility to the internal teams 
so they can create applications that are highly available and scalable. Sounds like a reliable, consistent, you know, operating environment. Part of that being the repeatability of that, being able to stamp out that pattern. Absolutely. I, you said it right. And in terms of, you know, what the, you know, when there is repeatability, that means you're able to automate, you are able to uh, uh, make it more cost effective. And that is one of the reasons why customers that run our VMware Cloud Foundation often find it cheaper than going to public cloud because they have automated uh, the processes, they have they're use, using less number of tools, and they're able to provide the level of service that their internal teams are looking for. Yeah, certainly public cloud certainly offers that declarative model, but w with, a, with a price, correct? <laughs> yeah, so, so VMware Cloud Foundation now offering that uh, with ARIA, maybe we can peel back the layers of that. What, what does that look like specifically when we say ARIA? Yeah, so ARIA, uh, management stack is market leading and it is composed of ARIA operations, log ma uh, ARIA log insight, ARIA network insight, and, uh, and ARIA automation, right? And as part of this effort of making the cloud management part of uh, the VCF stack is we're building, we, have, we already have a set of capabilities that enable you to uh, build that private cloud, right? You could organize your infrastructure into groups of resources and give it to your internal teams. Figure out who needs to use how many resources, create some level of governance into um, what, uh, which teams can use how much and what is the cost that you're incurring. And if you want to charge them back internally or show back internally, you can create that model for your internal teams. And secondly, how do you manage and operate this infrastructure? Right, how many, how, how can you scale, how can you add more capacity and at the same time uh, provide the type of uh, uh, service readiness to your internal teams. And for your internal teams, they need the agility. They, they don't want to send an email to you or create a ServiceNow ticket when they have to create an application, right? What we provide as part of RE automation on the VCF stack is provide that self-service uh, capability that enables any application developer to create modern applications, any user to create a VM, um, and to put together VMs and databases and things together to create an application. So that's the agility we're talking about, and it takes away the need uh, to uh, create these tickets and, and spend weeks before they get uh, the outcome. Okay. Yeah, that, that's really valuable. Uh, so we understand now we can actually turn power off, power on. Uh, you know, we can we, we have a self-service uh, capabilities. Uh, but what about like, you know, day two? Like, what about monitoring? You know, just in general, like, is there is there anything for performance or troubleshooting or anything like that? Absolutely. So when uh, obviously when uh, in any infrastructure or in any application, you will find issues. There will be problems that you need to solve. Right. The number of um, in order to do that, you got to be able to understand what is happening at each layer in the stack, in the infrastructure, at compute storage network, and also in the application layer. And, and figure out what is happening at the network layer, which is our network insight, uh, ARIA network insight that tells you what's happening in the network layer. ARIA operations provides you, and ARIA logs provides the ability to understand what's happening across the infrastructure, across Correlate the those events. Correlate those, those log events or those, those performance met metrics to activities. Absolutely, and so this way, as an, as an operator, I get the full stack visibility from the app to the wire to the network and determine where the problem is, leading to a fast time to resolution. This significantly reduces the cost to man operate your infrastructure. Well, I, I like that we're able to talk across those infrastructure silos and have visibility across them. Because historically, uh, when I was managing data centers, the networking team would have a networking tool that looked at some of the networking, but often it couldn't see into the networking of virtualization. Or I, um, you know, the security team would have, for some reason, all of the logs and no one else could see them. Um, you know, you had, you know, the Windows team would have a tool that looked at Windows, Linux would have a separate tool. This is kind of powerful having this tooling that can see across all these different subcomponents and applications. Absolutely, across the stack and the infrastructure, uh, including the underlying hardware, right? So it's not just our software that we look at. 
It is also the servers, the storage devices, the network devices, as well as above the stack, understand what's happening inside the application, whether it is a Java application, SQL application, or, or Kubernetes applications. And then you can, to your point, you can correlate and find the problem so the application developers can get the right outcome um, quickly. I like that. I like that. So I, I know that uh, that Aria is is certainly great for the private cloud uh, for for customers. But what about for partners? Is it is it the same exact offering for partners, or how do we how do we enable our partners? Yeah, when you uh, we have a, a couple of types of partners, right? We have partners that consume uh, our infrastructure and offer services to their customers, ah, okay. right? And as cloud part service providers, cloud or? service okay. providers, and these and for cloud service providers. You know, we provide a, a very simple way to create that cloud infrastructure uh, in, a, in a repeatable manner that they can stamp out uh, sovereign clouds and diff you know, our clouds in different data centers. And a very simple way to create a, a self-service interface for their customers. And all the things that I just mentioned, the ability to carve out resources um, to different customers and create governance policies per customer so they can understand how much they're using and going back and charging the customer so it integrates with the billing systems and so on and so forth. So we have the full 360 degree life cycle for a service provider to offer services to their customers. When it comes to our technology partners, we also provide an ecosystem of partners that can easily integrate with the Cloud Foundation ecosystem, uh, the Cloud Foundation stack. So the infrastructure providers, such as backup vendors, DR vendors, um, ISVs, can connect to our system and offer more value to our customers. Application uh, software vendors can connect to our um, the consumption surface that provides this um, uh, self-service uh, capability to our to, to developers and so their application template can be consumed as part of a, a larger blueprint or application deployment. Absolutely. So and it could be other partners can. Uh, provide that application blueprint to make it easy for a developer to simply click a button and it deploys the full application. So and that is the powerful blueprint technology that's in ARIA automation. Yeah, that sounds really powerful. I mean, it certainly seems like something you'd get from a public cloud offering, uh, but but for, for private cloud. But, but from a brownfield perspective, I, I know someone who has a very artisanal home lab, mm -hmm. and I was just wondering, would this be able to help them uh, with their own uh, uh, their own automation? Absolutely, we, you know, whatever he's doing manually, uh, imagine VMware Cloud Foundation is like a robot that, you know, automatically creates whatever he's creating. <laughs> the robots, they're taking our jobs, Pete. <laughs> nice. Well, there's hope for your own lab, John, I like it. Well, China, China that was, uh, that was perfect. Um, uh, where can people go to learn more about? Um, I know this is clearly uh, VMware.com would be it would be a, certainly a, a good place to start. Uh, this is, as I mentioned, part of the VMware Cloud Foundation offering. Uh, so I'm sure you're going to find lots of information there. Uh, and any other resources we can share with folks? Yeah, the our VMware website has uh, lots of material um, on how uh, Aria works, uh, Aria pro products work, and how they're integrating. And uh, we are happy to share more information as as we go along this journey. Very cool. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go check out the hands-on lab myself. Absolutely, <laughs> hands-on lab it is. <laughs> Chandra, thanks for your time today. Thanks, guys.